What's happening, guys? Welcome to the Russell Hentz Show. Welcome, welcome. We, ha we have a guest tonight, and his name is Boo Bernice. You can address me as Super Boo. Super Boo from Survivor Fiji. I just got and a notification that the Russell Hans show just went live. Bam! That just happened. <laughs> I got a push notice. Okay. So what are we going to do, guys? This is interesting, and I didn't really know how I was going to. This is, by the way, this is going to go on a podcast all over the world and the YouTube channel. I'm nervous. And it's going to be super exciting because we talked about this before, and I was like, man, that's we need to do a podcast on that, dude. Like the things that happen. A lot of people don't know what well, people do know that you got me on the show, but a lot of people don't know how in depth it is when it comes to who all you got on the show. Uh, but we're going to talk about the consequences of it. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to talk today about me and James. So oh, you did something. You did something. Now I'm hearing an echo. Okay. It's back to normal. I don't know what, what happened just now. I think I hit my head on the tail on the board. <laughs> okay. Again, Boo is hitting his head and falling all over the place like he did in Fiji. So yeah. I didn't know how to word this, but I just put the title to this is Survivor without James Clement and Russell Hans. Question mark. So that's the that's the title. It's gonna be pretty interesting, guys, if you stick around to listen to it. Uh now it, we wouldn't have played without Boo playing. There's no way. This it just wouldn't have happened, right? You agree on that? True statement. Uh, yeah, hundred percent. So, without Boo playing, then we don't play. Now, uh, is it is it? It was. It's weird how it all went down. But it, let's start from the beginning and explain to the audience how this happened. Now, the reason we want to talk about it is because I was a two-time fan favorite. Boo um, and, and uh, James was a two-time fan favorite. And it's going to sound like I'm bragging a little bit, but it is what it is when we talk about this subject. Uh, without James in Survivor China, it wouldn't have been Survivor China. James was a star. And then without... And again, he was two-time fan, fan favorite. What was he, Jane? He was in China, and then where? Uh, I think it was in Micronesia, the fan versus favorite. Yes. So both times he was two-time fan favorite, both times. Back to back. And and then I played season 19 and 20, and I also was a two-time fan favorite, back to back. So not only, you know, it, it kind of backs up our theory on what we're about to talk about. Uh, I was told personally – by Ann O'Grady, she was very high up executive for CBS, that Survivor was going to end season 20. A lot of people heard those rumors. I heard them directly from CBS that that was the case. And then after, you know, James, but I think James, bump, you know, bumped it up a little bit. Very interesting. Then after season 19 and 20, that happened. And then, we, then now we still have season 40 just happened. When is it war? Survivor's still here. Probably going to go to season 50. Okay. Now, this all started with Big Brother. That's the crazy thing. And it started with a friend of ours, which uh, Krista, me and Krista had a little thing, a little on and off thing. Would you, how would you, how would you, I wouldn't like to say that now. I said it then, but I don't, I don't, you know, I keep that a secret these days. <laughs> but we did have a little thing on and off, kind of like a, I don't know. It was more like a. I was working behind the bar. She come up, kiss me, and run, and that kind of thing. So it wasn't really nothing really spectacular, but it was just like she was the she was super cute back in those days, and I'm not sure how she's looking these days. But you've seen her on the show. So Krista, uh, I know you don't like to say it started with Krista. But it did so. Start it, no, yeah. I mean, that's that's how I got spotted was going with her. Okay. And so Krista from Big Brother played, and then she invited Boo to a finale. Now, do you take the story from here, Boo? Tell exactly how that went down. Well, that that story was, you know, as part of my uh, finale interview, like not my finale interview, my uh, the yeah, big CBS interview, the final interview, the final yeah. fifty, right. 
I told that story and they loved it. So what it was, um, Krista was going to watch her friends, uh, Boogie and Will. Maybe he was on her season two. Yeah. But Boogie was also her fiance and they had a couple of season two people on the all star show and she wanted a friend to go with. I was we weren't doing anything. We were just friends. So she said, Hey, come with me. We'll do some like cool parties. I'm like, Yeah, that'd be great. So we go and uh she wasn't allowed in on the CBS lot, but one of the girls, her friend. Why wasn't she allowed on the lot? Because well, she wasn't allowed because she was suing CBS at the time. But that's not the reason she wouldn't have got a ticket to go. Um, only several people get, you know, so many people get a, a chance to go on the lot and watch it live. And you know, one of the girls that we were staying in the hotel with um, that went there as a group with us, uh, she was invited and got a ticket to get on the lot and go watch it live in the green room. Okay. Um, so that's how we got in. We were well, first of all, left. first of all, let's start in Lafayette. What, you know, she gets the ticket, you know, you're heading. Oh, you, you, when, you are I, far back where we almost didn't, I almost didn't. Yeah. Know. That's the whole, that's the whole story here. Yeah. Uh, I mean, so that's, we'll first of all, how come I didn't know about that and how come I wasn't invited wow. to this show? Oh, you weren't even around man. you were, I wasn't excellent. around. No, you were in Texas. This was, you were in Texas raising your kids and stuff. Oh, okay. All right. So, yeah, she originally she asked me, and I said, okay, yeah, I, I would love to go. So I gave her the money for the tickets, you know, and I, I didn't have a lot of money, and, you know, but I, I was like, I I'll do that. Yeah. So I, I went, I, I gave her the money, and she said, everything's taken care of, and we're, we're leaving on this date. So I called her, and I said, hey, what, what time? So she, she calls me back and says, hey, I messed up. I was like, what do you mean? She said, well, I had a guy that was, I gave him our money to get us a ticket. And, uh, and he didn't, he didn't, he took, took the money. That's weird. I so, mean, why would so I was like, well, shit, I'm not buying another ticket. I'm like, last minute. I'm like, man, that sucks. Well, my money's gone. And, you know, <laughs> and she was all upset. She was pissed. So she got on this guy. She called and called and went, she finally got in touch with him. And she said, I just told Boo, and at the time I was an amateur MMA fighter, and she was, you know, she was saying, "Hey, let me tell you something. I told Boo that you stole his money, and he just called all of his, uh, all of his MMA buddies, and they're all coming to you. I gave him your address, and they're all coming to kick your ass right now. So it scared the shit out of this guy. <laughs> so he gets nervous, and he immediately buys us a ticket right there. He finds the He's money. Like, Here's my credit card number. <laughs> so she calls me. I didn't know she said this until after. So she calls me back and said, hey, we're going. I'm like, what do you mean? She's like, he got us the tickets. I told him, blah, 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 what, she, what I just said. So I was like, okay, good. So we almost, we almost didn't so, go. So you see how it's funny how this, the world works and revolves. This guy could have prevented CBS from making hundreds of millions of dollars. If he doesn't pay for the tickets, he steals the and tickets. And her aggressive ass that we don't like about her, that aggressiveness. Yeah. If she wouldn't have been that way, we would have never got it because she wouldn't. Have, a normal person wouldn't have called that dude and threatened his life with a bunch of MMA dudes to come beat him up. Right. Yeah. They'd have just been like, "I yeah. can't believe you did this to me," you know. So, a, part I didn't of know she was that like that. Right? I never knew she was that aggressive until after the, all of it. Right. Right. Well, I didn't put that together. Yeah, I was just like, "Okay, you handled your business on that one." Yeah. So. So we, we fly out and, and, and we're all in the limo and we're going to drop this girl that was invited. She had an invite and a ticket to go to the thing. So the way the guard check works is our limo pulls up. He gives the guard her name. I'm dropping such and such off. He's like, okay, go ahead. So we go and we drop the girl off and she gets out and we're like. Uh, so wait, when you get, wait, I want to back up a little bit. When you get to LA, you get there by the skin of your teeth, you're in LA. So now your next step is to get into the Big Brother finale. We weren't going. We, we no. This was a cu off the cuff. We're dropping this girl off. We're oh, so you, oh, we're so you out. wasn't even going to go to the finale? Oh no, 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 no. We were dropping this girl off and going to some pre parties. We were going to watch the live finale. And Boogie and all of them had an after party set up at some sushi restaurant. We were going to meet them after, right? Okay. So okay. we that was our plan. We were going to dinner. We were going out, watch the show, and eat dinner. And we had an after party with all of them after. So. Instead, when we drop this girl off on the lot, we're in the lot now, we're, and we drop her off, and limo starts to leave, we say, hey, park the car. It's like, well, y'all paying. So, yeah, just back it up and park here. We're staying for a minute. 
So we just stay. And she's like, hey, this, uh, I know that producer and I know that producer. I said, she's like, all right, let's, let's try to go and let's get out. So we get out and then she chicken out and we get back in the limo. And then she get out and we chicken out again. And then all of a sudden we saw this line of people going into this, this blank building is just a wall with a door no markings and okay. there's a line of people they all have wristbands on. and she she knows some of the people and she says oh i know so i said chris something's going on we gotta go so we get out and she's like freaking out again wanting to get back i said krista if we don't go now we're never gonna go <laughs> we gotta do something we, we, we leaving or are we doing something because this is it i can tell something's going on so she's all right let's go so we go in and, and get in line and start talking to some people, kind of cut the line and just, oh, hey, how you doing? Oh, Krista, what you doing? Blah, blah, blah. You know, we're talking. And, uh, and this is this is after she played, right? The season yeah, well, after. This is, this is okay. set four years after she played. This oh, is the years. All-Star okay. show. So oh, okay. This is season eight. She one. played on season two. Okay. Okay, so we're getting in line. And we're kind of mooching in, you know, like uh, kind of. Scooting in with everybody, walking in line and just talking, talking. And we noticed everybody had wristbands on. So we get in to this building and we realize it's the live show setting with the stadium seating and the stage coming out of the Big Brother house. And we're like, oh, shit. So we, we scoot off to the side and uh, and wait for them to kick us out because we don't have a wristband. They they're not thinking of that. They they they're not pros like us. So right. they they're like PAs. You know they got these right. headsets on. Yeah. And they walk up to us, good looking couple. It's like, hey, are y'all fans of the show? And Chris is like, yeah, we're real big fans of the show. And so it's like, oh, I got a great spot for y'all right in the front. All right, so we go sit down in the front row, first two seats next to the stage. Yeah, I see right you on the. Somebody Julie. sent a video yes. of you right a behind. Of you. Right behind Julie Chen. I start getting text messages. What are you doing on TV? I'm like, I, I don't know. <laughs> How did this happen? Okay. So I'm on, I'm on TV, you know, behind Julie Chen. I'm getting a lot of airtime in the back. Yeah. You know? uh, yeah. <laughs> and then, like, the big, I, I noticed this good looking blonde across the stage from me with a, with, a, with a boyfriend. And she's looking at me, but I'm used to, you know, girls looking at me. It happens all the time. Of course, me too. Yeah, they, you. Know, not, they don't look at you with the same gleam in their yes, eyes. Yes, they do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you have your fedora on and your, and your $10,000 oh, Rolex. <laughs> but anyway, I've been used to it. You, you just get used to it. All right. So after the show, um, there's an after party next door to this, to this and it's got a guard at the entrance and we're like chris is like running interference talking and it's like all right sneak in so so we had to sneak in to another place next door it's in wait, the same wait, lot it's wait, literally the show is over show's you, over after party for you the you tap show. in yeah get up now <laughs> there's a meet and greet next door uh with a limited amount of people who have the wristbands and free food and so drinks you literally sneak in to the live finale then i have to sneak <laughs> in again it. The next time I snuck in, there's a guard we have to get past. Yeah. And we have no wristbands. Right. So we sneak in. Chris is good at it. She's just as good as us when we were aggressive in college. Right. I was a little nervous, but she she was she was pulling the lead. But I, I mean, what, they, what can they do? Just tell you to leave? Yeah, but, you know, it's still a little, a little, a little scary. So, yeah. yeah, so we get in. All right. A little bit later, um, Erica Shea, the blonde. Erica Shea, was, yeah. I mean, I know Erica. Erica was my saying, girl. Yeah, she's the one that was across the thing looking at me. So she wasn't looking at me because she wanted to hook up. She's like, "That's an interesting guy that uh, we need his character." It was the last day or uh, last weekend of of casting. So obviously they weren't happy with my look for that that position on Survivor that year. So she walks up to me and she says, "She says, hey, have you ever heard of Survivor?" I'm like, "Oh," she said, "Yo, are you related to anybody here?" And I said, "Well, um, um." Uh, Oh, you thought you thought you were busted. Oh, yeah, I'm busted. I said, well, Chris, Chris is uh, my cousin. Like, that was going to happen. She snuck in, too. And they don't even want her there. So she says, well, we might be able to get around that. Um, he, he was like, well, you, you think I can stay here? No, I just, she said. Um, what was you, you thinking? Of, that she's about to kick you out? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So I said that. And she said, well, you ever heard of Survivor? I'm like, yeah. And I had I didn't watch TV for four and a half years. Yeah, at home, you know, I watched sports. I mean, we never watched TV. Well, I, 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 I got in a fight with the cable people 
and and it was or the satellite people, and uh, cable was like, there. So I'm, I'm done with you. Option. I'm done with you. <laughs> done. So I, I didn't watch TV. Well, she said, you know, of course I knew what Survivor was. I'm a Tom Sawyer, Huckleberry Finn type of fella. You oh, know, you remember, told is that when we were young, you, I think you and Shane, and y'all blindfolded me and Sean, yeah. Russ's older brother, right. and drove us around for an hour, uh -huh. and dropped us off in the middle of the woods, led us 30 minutes blindfolded into the woods right. with, with some blankets, some hatchets, uh, a gun, and a, and, a, and a jug of water. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Right, bye. That's how we roll. We were going to stay there for three days. We didn't make it because it was, it was bad. <laughs> that's, it was what, that's how we roll. Drop y'all yeah. off the woods blindfolded. So I was like, of course I know what Survivor is, even though I didn't watch, you know, but I, I watched like the first season and part of the All-Stars, right. but I didn't have TV for four and a half years. Anyway, she said, well, uh, you know, we, we, I think you'd have a great shot at going uh, to Survivor. Uh, we, we're, we'll give you, we'll pay for your, for your, uh, your, your cab ride if you come tomorrow. I'm like, okay, yeah, that sounds great. So I get up the next tomorrow. morning and go and I interview with everybody. As soon as I walk in and Lynn hears my, my voice, she's like, oh God, you're perfect. You know, so it's perfect because a lot, like a lot of people I got on, they were last minute people. Um, so they they're not happy with the half. So it's kind of like the la when you got to make a decision quick, you'll accept something right. a little easier, right? Right. Um, but anyway, so I, I, you know they like me. A month later, right. I'm in Fiji. Um, so that so that's. The thing is, the whole shocking thing about this all is you had to be in Fiji. You had to be on Survivor for Jim, for me to play Survivor, for James to play. Yeah. So without all that happening, without you sneaking into CBS lots, which is super hard to do, I'm sure, these days, uh, without all that happening, we don't play. So uh, when you get off the show, you... Uh, I don't, I don't remember really. You say that I begged you to play. I don't remember. Oh, you called me. You called me once every two months. Yeah, after, that was after I thought I had a shot. Well, I mean, I got, I got on. So, well, you know, and 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 probably you, you might have asked me, uh, but we we did the uh, pirate master thing. Yeah, the pirate master thing. And your kids. So we were kind of still involved with trying to get the kids, and you on pirate master. But I think it was maybe after James got on, you figure, well, shit, he got yeah. on, James got on. I, I mean, I, with your attitude, it's like yeah. you, you get me in front of these people, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it on that show. Yeah. So you sensed a real opportunity, so you were aggressive in trying to use my connections to to get you in front of them. You right. know, we tried. So uh, we'll tell the background of Pirate Master. Um, that was a show, and it. it it ties into the survivor about we think ending. They were yeah, they the were, whole video, my video, which we lost. I don't know where our video is. That'd be amazing. Charla might have it. I think if I could post that video, I would get a million, a million views on it. So uh, see if Charla give me a, if you give me some financial cuts, I could probably get see it see if Charla has that video. We so have let to me post. let me get this out. It, it ties into your to this podcast about would would survivor have continued without you? Or yeah. James. And I have a different take. I don't think it was necessarily James. I think James added to it. But the, the whole Russell the and and, and me uh, kind of it's the back end. So we did a video for Pirate Master, which Pirate Master to me was going to take the place of Survivor. Because from what you think, Survivor was going to be ending. Um, yeah. Anyway, that's what you were told. And, and there's rumors. And there was another show kind of cool like that with pirate master and that's what you interviewed for and you were it, obviously you were playing the villain because you were a pirate what pirate. you uh two years later after i got on you know a year after james uh or something like that a J uh erica calls me no what it was was brandon your nephew that got on later <laughs> right calls, calls me and, and says man get you get me on that show i said dude they don't even talk to me no more i said watch i'm gonna call erica you know they don't even they don't even pay attention to me anymore. So I call just to show him, and nothing. Well, two days later, I get a call about you from Erica. So that made her brain go, "Oh wait, we need a villain that that guy Russell that boos it jogged her memory, right? right?" So that's why she called me 
to ask me about, you remember the guy that had the twin girls and he did the, I said, yeah. And she said, she said, do you think he would play Survivor? I she said, asked you if you remembered me? <laughs> yeah. She said, you think he'd play Survivor? I said, I said, yeah, I think so. I mean, I'll give him a call. As soon as I hung up, I was like, oh, shit. I said, Russell, you standing up? Uh, yeah. No, I'm sitting down. I said, well, stand up. He's like, no. So I said, sit down. I said, they want you. He's like, what do you mean? Survivor wants you. You know, and that's where it, that's where that started. But um, Pirate Master was probably going to be, that in their brain, it's going to be taking over. Right. The next era of their CBS reality, that type, you know. Um, now, I, let, let me uh, delve into um, my thought on Survivor continuing after 20. I don't think it was James, right? I think, yes, he was something big. And he added to season 20. Um, mm -hmm. But I think it's they decided, you know, Russell, man, he's getting us some views. We're still number one in the time slot. Um we were going to end it and try to get Boston Rob, but you know, thing, but they didn't think you were going to do as well in season 20. Mark even told you that. And you yeah. told Mark, no, you're going to, yeah. you're going to admit if I do better. And yeah, he, you, he didn't think I was going to, he said with this group of people, not right. Right. And you murdered it again. Okay. So, wow. They're like, okay, we got something here, you know, and they continue to use the Russell angle. Yeah. Right. So they use you and Boston Rob mm -hmm. for, for for to battle each other. OK. And then they bring in um, they bring in a uh, uh, Brandon. For two seasons. Well, no, well, they brought me back a year and a half later. Right. With With, Rob. Right. Yeah. right. Right. So that's what I'm saying. So it was after they decided they said we're riding this Russell train. Right. And then they the Russell train includes Brandon. Cause it's the hands and the connection and they even thought about Sean maybe coming out there and, and then yes, they wanted to get away from that. So they utilized that and that's it. That, that kept that engine running. And then I enter the picture again and filter in, they don't realize it because I bring in people like, um, um, uh, the gay dude, uh, Colton, Colton. <laughs> I'll bring in Colton, who's a two-time player. And look, he's a villain. Look, no matter what you think, people know who he is. Yeah. He was a big-time player. So that's where I continue to help the show stay in. But it was, yes, I brought them some superstars. You did your thing. You held – you made them say, okay, we're going to continue. And then they used your angle by bringing you back with Boston Rob and then by bringing Hans back again with, with your nephew twice. And then I – I come sneak in and bring them some more stuff they don't even know about, um, you know, with with uh, with Colton. Right. So, yes, if I don't come in, uh, you know, randomly and luckily, as well as bring them superstars and being able to identify things that they would want, then the, the show ends yeah. at, at 20. Oh, so it, it goes all the way back to – if that guy steals their the y'all's money and doesn't y'all don't get the ticket back, or if Krista doesn't call threaten up him. there and threaten him, then it just there's no none of this happens. Yeah, or, you, or do I try heard, to get you guys never heard of Boo, you never heard of uh, of Colton, you never heard which might be good. You never heard of Brandon, another one may be good. You never heard of Russell Hance, you never heard of James Clement. And some of the super super fans know um, 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 Shannon. Shannon. Yeah. You know? So, yeah, there's a there's a lot to the 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 start. You know, where my connection comes in and helps. You know, and then you brought in. Yeah, they had a plan to keep going, and they utilized you. Yeah. And your name in the future. So yes, you said, man, you, you probably put that thought in, man. We're doing so well with ratings. Let's let's keep going because we can bring Russell back in a couple of seasons, and and that'll that'll generate you know. So when they decide, oh, we're gonna get another um, sign another contract, right? Yeah, they had that in mind. To me, they had that in mind to bring you back. They knew that's why they went ahead and signed that two year contract. To me, let's extend it. Yeah, you know, and then they kept riding. They kept riding it with Brandon, and then they wanted to get rid, get a get away from it as far as possible. But now Survivor is, you know, they have so much more 
on TV, different ways to watch media. You know, they got recordings. Right. So that's not the juggernaut it used to be with 30, 40,000 viewers, I mean, million viewers, but it wins its time slot year after year after year. It's not going to go away. Yeah. It, it's just, that's insane to me that so much happened just by going, sneaking in, doing something illegal and sneaking mm -hmm. into the, so well, not what's the moral of that story. Right. <laughs> and, and you know, it's like, guys, if you wouldn't have let us in, CBS at the CBS building, you wouldn't be making these hundreds of millions. Like the reason you got in there and everything happened because of that, it's crazy. You know what, what other indirect things that you brought to that table are players want to play like you. So Tony, right. who is not as well, big I, I think as that you. I made myself, I think I made myself, a, I created another, a different character. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so Tony is not as big as you. But he's he's gonna be in the in the annals of all time because of what he's done and the way he's played. He's he's played in your mold, like we talked about. It. Tony Tony might have the records right, um, but he's he, he's he's uh, he's not um, Lawrence Taylor, right? As opposed yeah. to the record holder um, Michael Strahan, right? Yeah. So he would be the record holder Michael Strahan, and 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 you're Lawrence Taylor, the legend, right? Um, but that but. People like that kept it going. So people interested in watching him. Only reason he's playing like he's playing is because of you. Right. And, I, and I, let me, I want to ask him, I want to ask him about his little, his little treehouse stuff that he hides in. I was the first one to do that. Except you I, did it, I did it unsuccessfully. <laughs> I had, they even named, you know how they named the shows after something like Survivor says? Yeah. Like if, uh, like I said, one one episode it was it's not Survivor, it's Thriver, it's it's right. not survival, it's thrival. They named that right. after me. Well, I, I it was a trail of knowledge. I called it the trail of knowledge. So they had a place by the water and and I, I made it a little camp, but I did it late in the season because yeah. I was I was so comfortable in the beginning. But people make remarks of that about the trail of knowledge, and I'm, I look back at Tony and he's doing it, and I wonder if he looked at if he remembered me doing that and said, man, that's a good idea. Yeah. Uh, I but, don't know, but do you, you know, think if so, it, then I had an, an, an effect on his game. Yeah. too. Do you think that CBS should be writing you a check? No, I think CBS should be interviewing me <laughs> to go back on, on, on another. So would you, would call. you accept that as a thank you? Just, uh, just an interview, just yeah. an interview. So not a even on the show. interview though, in front a of Jeff, not, um, okay. Uh, what? No, like I'm going to listen to you. I'm really going to listen to you. I'm not going to bring you in here and look at my phone and chew my gum and not, not listen. No, yeah. I'm going to go into it with an open mind. Well, I'm going to say fair. why you don't belong on here. And you convince me why you do belong on here. Well, I think and we'll have fair. a real conversation. Huh? And I'm sure someone from casting or somebody's going to listen to this. That's fair. What well, I mean, as much as you've done for the show, all you want to do is talk to Jeff face to face. That's it. Basically. Yep. I want a real interview with Jeff and his main main person. And I'm willing to accept why what he thinks. Give me these 10, 20 reasons. Why no, boo, it wouldn't work. Why? Okay, oh, let's talk about it. And I have every answer for him. I have every reason. Yeah, because every you, time he says, Hey, I got beat. This is what I say I always say about this situation. James did his tape. Willie did his tape. Got on Big Brother. As soon as we sent it to them, casting. Uh, no, you, mean, like, you mean I did James's tape. I did uh, Willie's tape. And you did and my tape. I did your so, tape, yeah. So, but as soon as I sent it to casting, they were like, I want them. Yeah. That's what oh, Shannon. Immediately. Shannon. Shannon was their favorite oh, pre, pre-cast person. Shannon, too. You did that they tape for Shannon. And the thing is, you know how to make the tape. You know, you know what they want. You know right. what. So and, and it's because I am what they want. I didn't give them what they wanted the first show. For one, they changed everything, right? They put the girl to choose. Well, tell me what cast. you did wrong. What did you do wrong? I tried to act very intelligent in my interviews, which is you're going to be a little bit more subdued. I'm going to articulate my words, and my thoughts. I'm going to be a lot clearer and slower. In my speech pack, like with a business interview, like I'm going to interview for a Fortune 500 uh, job, and what I learned was, and and look, I learned that uh, 
right after I got off the show, it hit me like a ton of bricks. Erica Shea said, you had one really good show. <laughs> That's not good what? enough for me. <laughs> oh, when I got off the show, Erica Shea is saying, "Oh God, uh, Jimmy Fallon is tweeting about you." <laughs> yep. I'm like, "What's tweeting mean?" Yeah, really, huh? Yo, we want you to do a YouTube channel, and you're like, "Nope, don't know nothing." I asked. That. They asked me to do all that stuff before when it was all over. I was like, "I don't want nothing." I didn't want to be a part of it. Yeah, I remember thinking, oh, "I don't want no YouTube. What's a YouTube? I don't want. Right. I don't want." I want to be prime time. I don't want you to. Mm -hmm. and now, well, so I don't. I don't know about getting on, but yeah, I, I, that's what I want. I want a, a real interview. Uh, people ask me all the time, "Would you do it again?" Of course, I would do it. I tell my standard answer is, "I would do it naked and for free." <laughs> right. If I if if that's what they wanted. Lou, I want to tell you about something here. All right, let me. Go. Something that I'm taking. Hit it. Something I'm taking. What you got? Some blue shoes. Some blue chews. I it. But I'm telling you, man, this stuff works. It works. I went out, I went out the other night and uh met this girl. First of all, you can get it pretty easily. Hold on a second. What more am I doing here? Yeah, you, so you get it, you can just call them up and they got like medical uh people that it's almost like the telemedicine. Uh, it's it's kind of like that you know a little bit about that type of yeah, stuff. So telemed. So you, the doctor interviews you and right. talk, asks you a, a couple of pertinent questions and deems if you are healthy enough to take it. And if so, you they'll set you up on on a monthly delivery. Yeah. So, but some people think that because of that, it doesn't work. Oh no. Yeah. So because you know you think it's too easy. It's too easy. I mean, you can't be 14 years old and call and get blue chew. You, it's just not going to happen. You have no. to be. You have to be. Hey, it's a medical thing, but it's easy to qualify because it's not. It, it, it it's not a, a narcotic, so yeah. it's pretty easy for the doctor to. All the doctor need to give it to you to be allowed to give to is to make sure you're healthy enough to take it. So yeah, and it's no waiting room, no appointment. You call bluechew.com. Bam. You call you you get scheduled. The one thing that you used to worry about all the time, Boo, is performance. No. Yeah, no, you did. No, no, not not after the first no. couple of times. <laughs> but now I'm a premature ejaculator. I got I, I got so much blue chew, we could yeah. have a party for two years. I like dang. <laughs> we got. So tell got, me how it works. Uh, you got to take it, it two hours later. No, you take it and it's like 30 minutes later. Not, it's not long at all. You take it, you know, you're just kissing them. You just pop. Well, what's the, what's the active them. drug in the blue truth? Blue I don't know. You're getting all medical on me. I don't know. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's, it's like the other stuff. that they Is have it still there. Dilafil? I don't know nothing about that. Oh, okay. You just know <laughs> but, it works. Yes. Okay. So you take the blue chew and then it, you last about, I mean, as long as you want, really. Yeah. You know. Depends on the girl. Hour, hour and a half, two if hours. They're not, if they're not putting on a show, I, I'm, I'm going to get bored. I mean, it, I last, it, it makes me last long enough to where I, I'm tired. I, I'm done. Well, how much bore you, though? <laughs> I'm out of shit. I got to gotta, gotta, gotta give it up. Okay. So, so would you try? Oh, of course. You? Of course. See you some? Yeah. I'm going to send you some blue chew. Okay. Blue chew. I mean, it's something I would have used it in college for sure. Does it turn your teeth blue? I don't want to. I don't want the girl to know. No, I'll try. I'll, I'll, I'll take one. No. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it's another pack. I got packs. You get a blue chew. You get a blue chew. I can't open it. I want to show it to you. Okay. Oh, here's one right here. So it comes in a little bit pack like that. Yeah. People think it's you, you, I know I used to think it was a joke until I took it. So people think that it's just a, oh, it can't be real. You just call. Everybody has that complex of, of not lasting long enough. You go, you know, you, you first time you with someone and you, 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 you know, you really like this person. Hey, if you won and done, if you're, if you're, 10, 15 minutes on this beauty queen, she's done. She's walking. <laughs> so, so once you go, it's, it remains erect. 
Yes. That's that's what I, I needed. Just taste a little bit of it. That's what I needed growing up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that's, <laughs> that's what you needed growing up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How's taste, it taste? Tastes like a sweet toy. Oh, nice. So it even tastes good. Okay. Yeah, but if I'm telling you, if you were married, to, if you were about to or starting to date someone and then you, you last 15 seconds, she can't like that. That can't be a positive thing. Um, I, I've heard different. I've heard, some girls take it as a compliment, but it can't continue to happen. <laughs> right. He loves you me so much. You can't do that every time. <laughs> he loves me so much. But guys don't want to go through that. Uh, they'd rather be on the other but side. I, of it. I think that's a. I mean, I get it. Yes, you can just, you know, 10 seconds, 15 seconds, and then all of a sudden you're embarrassed, but then you say, oh, you just turned me on so much. But and with then, the Bluetooth, you can do that and, and go in a couple of minutes and right. just keep going. Keep and going. Like, oh, I made him go, and he just kept going. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah, the girl love you for that. Love you forever. Yeah, we need to do a Bluetooth commercial. <laughs> this, that's what this is. The Bluetooth. That's exactly what this is. <laughs> so I, I no, I, I don't mind getting paid with the chew. <laughs> it's the chew, man. I mean, it's it tastes good. It's good for you. Don't have any problems. Good for her. I don't. It's good for her. Mm -hmm. There's not a woman out there that would say, "Hey, ten seconds, you good? I love them anyway." Mm -hmm. She gonna leave you guys. She gonna leave you. Yeah. So call up Blue Chew, bluechew.com. You talk to some uh, medical physicians. They're going to ask you, you know, stuff like, you know, you got high blood pressure. I don't uh, know what question you said, but yeah. I'm sure that's one of the questions. Yeah, of course. So, you know, and that's it. I wish we could have some ladies on here to tell me if, if, if Lisa, she's on our board right there. Uh -huh. If somebody lasts 10 seconds, 10, 15 seconds, but you love them, you love them. Are you going to keep them close to your heart? Or are you going to say, I can't do this? I just need to know from the ladies, the ladies, ladies, like just, they like to act like that. It doesn't matter. You know what I mean? They like to act like, Oh, it's, it's love. If you love someone, that's bull. Yeah. It's never love. Well, it's love, but not if you go in ten seconds. Right, right, right. You'll you'll lose interest. You won't fall in love with the ten second person because you don't she, stick around long enough. She has to be super disappointed, and that's the point. That's the whole point. You know, she doesn't have to be disappointed. You can go to bluechew.com and you can make her dreams come true and yours. Right. Just like that. Right. Okay. All right, we'll move on with the conversation. Okay. So uh, without Boo, there is no James and there's no Russell and Survivor's over. Do you think that without us, bottom line, is Survivor over? Is it done? It, 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 yes, but James didn't factor into them. I think James kind of. They had already decided oh, okay. to stop the show, according to you yeah. and a, a lot of theories. Right. A lot of so, people that. According to the popular theory, the show was gonna end. So James had already had his time. Yeah. You know, it's the after Russell effect. Now look, James is always gonna be in the, to me, uh, in the top ten. Two time MVP back to back. There's only two of them. So yes, and he's a black man. Mm -hmm. And he's Physically, the most James. gifted looking person, uh, you know, two time James. fan favorite. He's again, he's playing again. Two time fan favorite. Okay. That's top 10 material. Yeah. Sorry. You know, bias or not, he's a two time MVP. There's yeah. only two of them, and there's only a couple of MVPs. Yeah. And then Boo used to tell me uh, after I played season 19, I was at only home for a little while. Did I see you after I played season 19? Yeah, I picked you up at the airport. Okay, so when when I told you I'm going to be more popular than James. Didn't you? Well, you, you oh, no, told I me said, after. No, I, I said you told me that before the show. Before, before the show. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's a boss move right there i said i'll be more popular than james you were like impossible, impossible. right right you can be that's popular. like a rookie coming in and saying i'm i'm gonna be you know the, the best quarterback in the history of nfl yeah i mean if i'm gambling i'm gambling hard on the on the no <laughs> right but i was proven i was proven wrong you know when I that's got the off, thing about so, them. Do you the remember what I told you? Do you remember what I told you? That I know. I remember what you told me there. Part you said, "Guess who died?" And you started naming people: Michael Jackson, Steve, uh, uh, the guy from the Houston, the Houston Oilers quarterback, uh, Steve McNair. McNair. Steve McNair. And you said somebody else. Um, it wasn't Whitney. Was it Whitney Houston? Could have been Whitney. I think it was Whitney Houston too. I know. Yeah, and you thought you won, but I, I told you not specifically. Do not tell me a word about the show. Right. And you thought you won, so you, I mean, you, yeah, because I because I went to the doctor because I was going straight up to Doctor Freeman, and uh, and I told him, he said, "How'd you do?" I said, "I think I just won a million dollars." Man, he's like, "Yeah, I'm yeah, you were in for ten days." Yeah, ten days. So I went straight to him. We went straight to him. Like we were talking to him two days after I got back. Yeah, he got you. He got you on that. Um, what he called the wild animal. I don't know diet. what that. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I remember him. Like, like I, I, you're right. you gotta you gotta eat like a what a wild animal is gonna eat. Yeah, it's crazy. And I, all this processed foods were hurting you. You can. The the crazy thing is, you can see physically I was ready, but I wasn't ready physically because I remember being so weak still. You know, my muscles just – it at first, yes, I was strong. But as I was going into the game, I felt like I was getting yeah. weaker and weaker. Well, of course. When I did the challenge – that challenge I did with Tom, I did that same challenge in Australia Survivor, and I was ready to play that. I hit the dude so hard, he flew off bigger than me, flew off the first time I hit him. I hit him, he flew back, and then I just bombarded him, and he fell off before I could hit him twice. But when I did it with with Tom, man, I felt like I was like a feather that I yeah. could didn't have no power whatsoever. Of course, yeah. So it's like the thing that I would be best at, low to the ground, wrestling, hitting with the the thing I think I would be best at. I, I and then we did it twice. They only showed it once. And then the second time I'm like, I'm a, I'm a, you know, I got it. This is what I'm good at. I got same result. Yeah. I just could not have any power whatsoever. But even even mental as mentally strong as you are, pulling that mental strength into it the second time, there was still not. There's just no physical. Yeah, I mean, when you, when you starve yourself for that long, I mean, there's yeah. nothing. There's nothing you can do. All right, guys. Well, we wanted to tell you, give you guys a little heads up on on how that went down. How James, I, tons of other survivors and big brothers players actually played the game is because of boo so if you want to send your money to his venmo <laughs> <laughs> let's get let's get a, a rally going to get super boo back on we're just survivor. trying to get an interview we're just trying to get boo and in the crazy thing is if done if boo doesn't uh get us on you guys know none of us and and he should at least have the opportunity to be able to Talk to Jeff. Boo will fly his way over there. Oh, he will do. Yeah. He will spend all the money it takes. They don't have to spend a penny. All he's trying to do is get in front of Jeff and have a second chance. They're gonna write that million dollar check though. Boo, I yeah. can guarantee you, they, if they put you on that second chance list, yeah, I guarantee you, I get you on. Well, I, I, I would. I, we would do show after show after show. Vote. For Boo, he deserves to be on. He got it all. Well, you know what? It shouldn't even go that far. Because if I get the interview with Jeff, they 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 gonna sur circumvent a vote. Jeff's gonna be like, I want him on the show. I mean, it's a it's an easy, it's easy for me to see the. I know where I screwed up, and it's not that I, I am what they want. I don't have to create a character. The problem was I hid that character that they want from the interviews. I hid that they love me in game. They love me in game. Being myself, they freaking love me. The yeah. the, the 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 uh, producer was like, well, "You disappear in the interviews." Well, you need to bring that same energy, man. You're a great in cast character. I mean, they will follow me around. Keep gonna fall. 
Yeah. <laughs> he gonna yeah. fall out that tree, and hurt himself. Oh, I think we'll get you if they do a second chance again. We got to get you on the list. I, uh, I mean, I will. We got to get you back on the list. We get you on the list. I think that the people will vote you back on. I tell you what, I'll, I'll be entertained. You made the I'll top one hundred. You made ninety-eight or something in the top one hundred. That wasn't Who? just me vote. You made the Who? top one hundred. Who did? You. you. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. you know, because of because of, I I mean, I was the greatest single season challenge, total challenge team and uh, combined team and individual challenge player ever. That's a that's a big thing, you yeah. know. Yeah. And, and the way people judge how so different people rank people <laughs> different ways, everybody puts in physical prowess to their formulation of where you rank as a survivor member. So being the best uh, challenge person, you know, it always, I always like this part. I was the best challenge player ever and you were the best strategic player ever. Yeah. You know, to, to me, that's pretty cool. You know, yeah. two, two buddies from high school. Yeah. You know? Anyway. Yeah, so uh, guys, if you interested in blue chew, we'll have the link in the description. Don't let her suffer anymore guys. And, and you know, you just look bad. You want to go yeah. ahead and get you some blue chew. Yeah, get, your, get your mind right. Hey, I'm just trying to help you. I don't get I don't get a percentage off of blue chew. If they did, if I did, then I mean, I, we would have loved to find this in college. Well, yeah, well, you know, Viagra is forty dollars a pill. So <laughs> yeah, well, that's what that's what uh, everybody was chasing back in the day. Viagra. Hey, look, late in college, I wasn't early in college. That wasn't yeah. even in college. That was after college. So yeah, yeah so, if we had that in college. So we got to do a few things here. Get Boo on uh, Survivor and make your wife happier or your girlfriend or your boyfriend, whatever you want to do. Yeah, that's right. So, so, uh, and if you want to be part of the Patreon group, boo, I don't know why you haven't did this yet, but when it, when it comes to the cruise, our patrons are taking a cruise. We have 33 rooms booked. Michaela Wingle's going, uh, Libby's going. You'd love a Libby. You'd absolutely, she's gorgeous. And also Sarah Lacina is going uh so that's one about 10 months away we got nine months away uh if you guys are interested in going on a cruise with us the patreon page uh if you're interested in being a patron it'll be in the link below uh you can become a patron as little as five dollars uh a month and we do a lot of things we have a game page where we we just had a patreon uh survivor online game thing with johnny fairplay and his patrons the Russell Hans show won that one. Now we're doing another one with someone called the survivor specialist. We'll probably take them too, but you never know. And then we're going to go and do one. We're going to do one with Rob C. I haven't, you know, and we're going to do a few things. We just have a lot of things going on with the game page. Uh, you come be a patron. You'd be amazed how close everyone is in that, in that group. Everybody's I'll always come talking. Come uh, be a patron. I'll try to get it done after I get back from my next offshore trip. It's five dollars. Yeah, I could handle that. <laughs> okay, yeah, just uh, be a patron, and then you'll see. It's super close, man. There's, I didn't think it would be possible to have to be close with people like how many uh, patrons in the comment got? section. For instance, in the comment section, Brian Long's in the comment. He's one of our patrons. He he lost his dog, and he was really upset, and. Our patrons sent him a picture, a drawing of his dog, and uh, without even me saying anything, they just did yeah, it. Pretty cool. Denise, same thing with her. They sent her, you know, flowers because she does so much for the page. She's the one that helps me so much. She's the CEO, so she takes care of a lot with the page. So we have group people like that. So guys, if you want to be, how many do you have? I have one hundred and forty-five patrons. What's your What's your goal for the next year? Uh. Shoot, it's funny you ask because I have goals. Uh, Getting organized in your old age. Yeah, <laughs> my goals for the end of this month is 160. That's fi I'm 15 short of that, and I don't know if that's going to happen. But uh, my goal for the end of the year, I think we had it at like 230 or something. So it's not that much. We thought we'd be a lot going a lot faster because Big Brother's happening, but people don't know I do Big Brother. Matter of fact, I'll be live on Big Brother in 20 minutes. So we're doing, I'm doing uh, the show. I got to hurry up and do that. Crank them out. I got to watch right. the show. 
So I got to do that. I got to hurry up and get off, fast forward it, and watch what I can watch real quick. All right, everybody. It was good, uh, good to Let's talk and, and share uh, some of my experiences. Uh, Let's get Boo on the show. That's all I got. Uh, I'll be Keep on. Boo, I'll go knock know, on Jeff's door. You know what you need to do, Boo? What's that? You need to keep hope alive.